It's Thursday, September 17th, and time for your Bobby Destiny Morning News update. There's an appeal for a more harmonized approach from regional governments in the requirements for welcoming visitors to the Caribbean. The call came from regional tourism officials on Wednesday during the Caribbean Tourism Organization's forward-looking discussion, which looked at how Caribbean destinations have been progressing during the reopening of their borders since the COVID-19 pandemic hit and the next critical steps they should take. Lisa Indar, Head of Regional Tourism and Health Program at the Caribbean Public Health Agency said there was a need for more uniformity in testing requirements for visitors to the region. We need to up our surveillance, uh, making sure that you know from the time the person entered the country um, and how they're surveying, how, how you can be able to, to actually uh, to verify their stay, their contact tracing. If someone is sick, we must have proper quarantine. So we really need to up our public health uh, uh, infrastructure and surveillance. And then I really cannot overemphasize this. The most important thing right now to break this transmission is our prevention measures. Acting General Secretary of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Neil Walters, echoed the sentiments. I, I would think one of the most critical things we need to do at this time is to get um, the perspective on, on, on testing correctly and get it as uniform as possible. Um, I, I think having a, a, a traveling um, a traveling group that knows exactly what happens when they get to the destination and, and having that information out there in a way that is as clear, concise, and as harmonized as possible will be significantly helpful to the Caribbean region. Um, and, and, and I think that is something that we need to work on as, as quickly as we can. Chief Executive Officer and Director General of the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, Frank Comito, also called for more consistency in protocols. More harmonized approach, more consistency in our region. We have done a great job in collaborating and cooperating, public-private sector, various governments, and so on. But it's still not what it could be. If we, if we yes. were more collective in our approach, more harmonized, uh, we would create less confusion in the marketplace out there. There's a lot of confusion. Well, what, we heard it today. What do I need to do? There's, there's 26, uh, 32, depending on how you look at it, different requirements for entry into the Caribbean. It should be more consistent and harmonized, and we should be moving towards that. The transfer of principles at the start of the new school year is nothing new. That's the response of Education Minister Santia Bradshaw to reports of frustration in some corners over last-minute transfers as schools prepare to reopen next week under unprecedented circumstances. The minister disclosed that such changes were under the remit of the chief education officer. Change is always difficult for people to come to grips with, um, you know, but just as ministers have to adapt to changes in ministries, um, we expect that leaders of institutions across the board, whether at the corporate level or in more public institutions, will also be able to do the same. I am confident that wherever our principals are transferred to or our acting principals have to go, our teachers, um, that they are a competent group of individuals that will be able to hit the ground running. So I expect great things from a number of the persons who um, um, the transfers have been put in place for. What do you mean at the, at the last minute? I know you said that it's a matter for the chief education officer, but as minister, mm -hmm. are you not a bit concerned about the, the late time frame in which these principals will have to adjust the new school plans, especially in circumstances where parents and teachers would have been asked to liaise with principals? If you have principals no moving into an institution under these conditions, that's a bit concerning. There is nothing new about um, the movement of principals at the beginning of the school term. If anything, perhaps we need to do it moving forward a bit earlier. Um, but principals are accustomed to movement, and no principal really is, is um, you know, expected to remain at an institution indefinitely. That is part of the profession. The minister was speaking to the media yesterday following talks with parents and guardians about protocols put in place for the reopening of schools on Monday. She also addressed concerns about vending near school plants given the COVID-19 environment. That issue relating to vendors did come up. I mean, I think in this environment, we want to make sure that 
people are still able to make a living and some of these vendors are indeed parents as well. Um, the Mr. Chapman, the Deputy Chief Environmental Officer would have addressed that because I think a lot of times parents are concerned about whether the um, you know the food is safe um, at the vendors and obviously there are protocols already in place in relating to health um, that you know would address that so the concern is not so much with the sanitization and, and the preparation of the food but it is more with the number of students that might congregate in front of the vendors and obviously um, a new set of protocols will be put in place relating to vendors and their ability to play their trade outside of the school premises but in no way do we intend to stop vendors from being able to be part of the school environment um, you know in a lot of cases students um, have developed relationships with our vendors and our vendors with them and they are really another pair of eyes that look out for the students um, outside of the school premises. So as much as we can work with them to ensure that they follow the health and safety protocols and that the children are safe, that is going to be the first priority. It might not be a smooth reopening but teachers are as ready as can be for the start of the new school term next week. That assurance from President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Pedro Shepard. However, he told Barbados today the union has scheduled a meeting for Friday with its members to hear any concerns ahead of Monday's reopening. Teachers are working feverishly at their schools to have the schools ready for Monday the 21st. But we are also cognizant of the fact that the wear test is going to be on Monday uh, when, when students are on the compound. Um, we know for sure there are going to be challenges prior to the opening of, of the school, and I mean the physical opening of the school. Um, I know there are some schools that are looking at opening hours in terms of when they should open the gate to allow students in, um, because you still have to control them once they are on the inside. It means that you have to have people on hand, either teachers or Parents would volunteer to be on hand to supervise those children prior to the commencement of school at year 45. You would also um, appreciate that there would not now be full assembly and so on. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To news from our regional neighbors now, Bohemian Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has approached Parliament seeking an extension of the state of emergency until the end of October. We get more in this report from Eyewitness News. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis gave notice today that the government intends to extend the state of emergency to October 31st at the next sitting of Parliament on September 23rd. The current state of emergency orders expire September 30th. The extension comes as the Prime Minister indicated that there has been a drop in confirmed COVID-19 cases. The medical team and health professionals have been doing an excellent job in conjunction with the Minister of Health. And we would note that the numbers are coming down. But he also pleaded with the public to adhere to social distancing rules and refrain from social gatherings for at least the remainder of the month, as he said the actions of the public will determine when the country will reopen. And would help us in opening our country a lot sooner and would help them in returning back to their jobs, create opportunities for jobs, and I think it would help the country. And finally on the international scene, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has made it clear that a vaccine alone cannot solve the COVID-19 pandemic, not in the near term. And he has issued a call for the international community to come together to defeat the virus. Many pin their hopes on a vaccine. But let's be clear, there is no panacea in a pandemic. A vaccine alone cannot solve this crisis, certainly not 
in the near term. We need to massively expand new and existing tools that can respond to new cases and provide vital treatment to suppress transmission and save lives, especially over the next 12 months. But starting now, a vaccine must be seen as a global public good because COVID-19 respects no borders. We need a vaccine to be affordable and available to all, a people's vaccine. Mistrust in vaccines is on the rise around the world. We have seen alarming reports of large segments of the population in some countries indicating their reluctance or even refusal to take a future COVID-19 vaccine. In the face of this little disease, we must do our utmost to halt deadly misinformation. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistudy.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.